Hello everyone and welcome to Jerry's Live. I'm your host Matt Tuman, and tonight we're going to be talking about advanced perspective drawing. I'm super excited about this class. If you're new to Jerry's Live or if you don't always watch all the episodes, this is a follow-up to episode 313, which was an introduction to perspective drawing. So we're going to move a little bit faster in this class, but my goal is that even if you didn't see that episode, you'll still be able to understand what's going on. So don't fret. But if you're getting a little confused in the beginning as I'm going on, that class might help you understand things a little bit better. So feel free to check that out. And we're going to get right into things. So a lot of you guys, after that intro to perspective class, had requested I show you guys how to draw a more complete environment. We had just been drawing single objects in perspective. But now I'm going to try to show you guys how you can get kind of a whole cohesive environment going. And we're going to do it as a little cityscape. But before I get too far, I have to mention that tonight's class code is JL317. So if you take that code and you type it into the search bar on jerrysautorama.com, it'll pop up with our teacher's cart, which has all the supplies I'm going to be using tonight. If you need anything, if you see anything that you're interested in, that is the place that you can find it. That being said, uh, I want to talk about materials really quickly because there's a lot of different things that you can use for drawing perspective. I'm going to be showing you guys just with like the Zazan graphite pencils, uh, and I'm going to be using a fairly darker pencil while I'm teaching the class so you guys can see it well on my sketch pad for the camera. But before, if you're trying to draw along with this or if you're just sketching in your sketchbook along with the class, um, it's a good idea whenever you're doing perspective drawing, you think of it basically as like I'm just sketching. I'm just roughing things out, getting an idea of where things should be placed. So you kind of want to draw lighter if possible so that you can layer it later with darker colors. So while I'm going to be using a darker pencil, feel free to use a lighter one. And then there's another option for you guys if you like. You can use a non-photo blue pencil, which these are fun. Um, they are essentially blue colored pencils and originally their purpose was created so that if you scan them in on a copier, the this certain shade of blue wouldn't show up so it would vanish. Now modern day copiers don't do that, but it's still a really nice light sketching pencil for just drawing things out and it can be easily edited out in like Photoshop and things like that. So if you want to use something like this or a light colored pencil and then go on top of it with something like these accurate fine liner pens ink on top, you can do that. I don't think I'll get quite into using these. I do have them in the teacher's cart if you're interested, but I'm probably just going to stick to like a darker graphite pencil to start out with. So. That was my PSA about materials, but you don't need too much to get started out with perspective. And if we go to the overhead, I'm just going to pop open my sketchbook here and we're going to get started because I have a lot to show you guys. So let me find a clean page and I just have this large Soho drawing pad. And I mentioned this in last class, but I really recommend that you guys start out with a really large piece of paper when you're doing perspective, because when you're drawing on a smaller piece of paper, it has to do with where you place your vanishing points. If your vanishing points are too close together on the paper, then your drawing's gonna look kind of skewed. Your perspective's gonna look skewed. And most of the time when you're drawing perspective, you actually wanna place your vanishing points like to make it look realistic, like off the page, even like on your table somewhere. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So I'm gonna do a really quick review of a few things we talked about last class. If you're new to this, or if you just need a little bit of a refresher. So I talked about one point and two point perspective for intro to perspective drawing, but in this class, I'm just gonna be focusing on one point perspective so that we can kind of keep things simple since we're gonna be including a lot more elements in this class than we did previously. Um, and one point perspective, essentially what it is, is like if you're looking down a really long tunnel and everything's vanishing, getting smaller towards the end of that tunnel, that's one point perspective. So everything's kind of converging towards one point on your horizon line. So the first thing we want to do when we're trying to draw an environment is figure out where we want our horizon line to be. So I have a ruler right here. Um, if possible, if you have a nice triangle or even like a T-square, you can use it to figure out exactly um, where your line will be parallel according to your paper. That will help you a lot because a lot of perspective drawing is parallel lines. So if you have something like that, I encourage you to use it. If you have a triangle, figure out exactly how to get this parallel. But for time's sake, I'm just going to put my ruler on here and kind of eye where my horizon line would be. And I'm going to put my horizon line about the center of the paper, just for simplicity's sake. So let me get a pencil really quick. I think I'm going to use a 4B. And let me know if you guys have a hard time seeing this on camera. I'm going to try to make it as dark as possible so that you can see it well. This is going to get pretty messy and covered in graphite as I go on but I'm just sketching and showing you guys how you can kind of mock up your own drawing. So 
I got my horizon line right there. What the horizon line is, is, well, the horizon, but the other important aspect to know about the horizon line, I'm actually going to label it so we don't lose it in all the sketch lines that I'm about to do, uh, is that it is eye level. So you can imagine when you're staring off towards the horizon, wherever that horizon kind of meets the sky lines up with wherever your eyes are resting on the paper. And that's something that's very important to think about when we're drawing a whole scene because it ties directly into your proportions. So even though I'm just going to do the most simplest type of perspective drawing for this class, which is one point perspective, and I'm actually going to take and put my um, point perspective, my perspective point, excuse me, right in the center here to keep it nice and simple. Um, the most complicated part of building a whole entire environment without a reference photo or anything like that and doing it in perspective is making sure that all your proportions are related to each other. It can be really easy to make like a car look ginormous on accident or a building look way too much, like way smaller than it should be. And I'm gonna, my goal for this class is to really show you guys how you can keep your proportions accurate throughout when you're not using a reference image. And that's also my goal is to be able to show you how you can start constructing different shapes and things without that. So. I think for this point perspective, since this is one point perspective, what I want to draw is you just looking down a street. So imagine you're the viewer for my drawing and I'm thinking about what the viewer might be seeing. So if you're just looking down a long street, what's the first thing that we'd probably see? Maybe we're about to cross a road and we're looking down the sidewalk. So maybe I'm going to start out by drawing a sidewalk. So I'm going to take my ruler here and I'm just going to draw wherever I want the sidewalk to begin. That you can put it up close if you want, you can put it farther away. That is kind of up to you. I'm going to put mine just about here. Uh, and I'm going to start out like this is um, the first thing I'm putting down on this paper. It's going to kind of set the proportion standard for everything else that I'm going to draw. So I'm just going to think of how wide I want the sidewalk to be. So I'm going to make mine probably about three inches. You don't have to be super exact, but I have my ruler out here. So I figured I would say it. So that's going to be probably the first square corner of my sidewalk. And then one point perspective, again, everything is vanishing towards one point in the far distance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each corner of this parallel line, which should be parallel to my horizon line, and I'm gonna draw it in a straight line going towards this vanishing point. So again, everything is vanishing towards that point. So I'm just gonna try to get basically a very simple sidewalk in here very quickly. I might even end up drawing like a building here, like maybe our sidewalk isn't continuing on into infinity towards the horizon line, but just to get an idea of what the perspective of the sidewalk is going to look like, I'm just going to draw it straight to that point. And then maybe the sidewalk is wrapping around a building, so I'm going to draw it coming forward this way. Excuse me. <coughs> my throat is a little dry, so sorry about that. Um, so my sidewalk, I think I want it to have be wrapped around a building. And it's key to know that I didn't, uh, I don't have an exact mind of what I'm going to draw right now. I'm kind of making this up as I go along to try and show you guys exactly how I'm thinking through each step as I go. And I'm, again, not using a reference image. So I'm trying to think of what this would look like in my mind's eye, which can be very, very complicated if you've never done it before. But I'm going to try to find like the corner of my sidewalk. Maybe this is where I had originally drawn my three inch line, if you can see that. Uh. I know that's very small right now. This is where I originally had drawn like my three inch mark. So I think this is like the square corner of the sidewalk. So I'm going to take that point and I'm going to also draw it towards our perspective point. And then I'm going to try to find wherever I think the corner of the sidewalk should be where it's like hitting the edge of the building. I'm going to determine where that is. And maybe that looks like already if I put my ruler right there, Maybe that's a little bit thin for the sidewalk, so maybe I'll push it back a little bit. And right now, we're just kind of eyeing things. This is like the first steps to figuring out what your proportions are going to end up looking like. So I think that looks like a good start for like the corner of a sidewalk. So the next thing we have to start thinking about here is, one, where is the other side of this road? How wide is this road going to be? And start putting buildings in, because this is supposed to be an entire scene. Um, what I'm think I'm going to end up putting inside the scene is a few buildings, lamp posts that are vanishing towards the end of the scene, and I'm going to try to fit in a very simple sketch of a person, maybe walking their dog, and maybe a car if we have time. But if there's anything really specific that you want to see me included in this environment, which is going to be 
like just a simple cityscape, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can try to get it in. But right now I'm just gonna figure out where I want my first building to be, which is almost directly in front of us. Like it's right up in our, it's gonna be fairly large on our page here. And I'm just gonna take this one point that I've already determined for the edge of my sidewalk. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a straight line going perpendicular from that point. So I know it's exactly perpendicular from the rest of it. That's the easiest part of one point perspective is that while everything's vanishing towards this point, any line that's not vanishing towards your vanishing point is gonna be parallel or perpendicular to the other lines. So keep that in mind. If you're not sure if a line should go towards your vanishing point, see if it works if you just stick it like as parallel or as perpendicular to the other lines. And if that works, maybe that's what you need to do instead of making it vanish towards the vanishing point. But all of our lines that are gonna be going up are gonna be perpendicular with our horizon line. So I got that set down. Again, a triangle is gonna be super helpful for this or a T-square if you have one. Um, and I'm gonna determine, I drew this up kind of randomly, but I need to determine how tall I want this building to be. And if I want this to be a cityscape, maybe we're downtown where like the buildings are a bit taller. You know, maybe you're, I don't want quite like a skyscraper, but maybe things are getting just a bit taller. Quick question. Yes. It blipped out on us for some reason? It blipped out? It blipped out. Oh. But um, somebody said they missed why the center long line and the dot can give a brief review. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I'll give you a little review. I'm so sorry that that blipped out on you guys. We have new equipment that we're kind of, we've figured out, but we're still in the testing stages. So please let us know if you see anything like that. That is very helpful to let us know. So this line right here that I have labeled a little bit, if you guys can see, is your horizon line, which is essentially like if you're in a large plane and you're looking out towards the distance where you see the horizon hitting the sky, that is what your horizon line is. And something important to know is that horizon line is always gonna be the same as your eye level. Um, that is the first part that we wanna lay down when we're doing perspective drawing is just figuring out where the horizon line or your eye level is going to be. And that's the point where we can put down this dot right here, which is our perspective point where everything is gonna be vanishing towards that point. So I explained it a little bit before, but I'm gonna say again, we're doing one point perspective right now, meaning there's one point on the horizon line and eye level. You can get a lot more complicated. You could do two point, three point, four point. We're not gonna get into any of that because we're just trying to build this environment right now. But one point perspective is like if you're looking down a really long tunnel and everything is getting smaller and smaller and smaller towards one point towards the very end of that tunnel. Or if you're looking down like a long street, everything looks like it's getting smaller and converging towards one point at the very, very end of that street. That is what we're doing with one point perspective. Uh, to figure out where I put this point, I just kind of put it wherever I wanted, which in this case to keep things simple was the center of the page, but you can actually move this point around to other spots on the horizon line, depending on what kind of image you want to create that's part of something that you just kind of got to get a feel for it and figure out how you want to construct your image. But for simplicity's sake, I'm saying for my image that we're just looking down a really long sidewalk on like a cityscape. So hopefully that explained if any of you missed what horizon line and that one point perspective is. Uh, I'm going to keep drawing here because I know this is going to be a lot to fit in and I want to make sure we get through it all. But again, um, that intro to perspective class that I had done is JL3. 13, JL313 Intro to Perspective. You can find it on our YouTube and our Facebook if you want a more in-depth introduction to perspective drawing or if you need a little extra help understanding what's happening because it really is quite complicated. Yes. You also mentioned skewed versus outside perspective earlier. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on that? Or yeah. That coming? Um, I'll elaborate on it now. So that really comes into play when we're talking about two-point perspective, which is where things are vanishing in two different directions. If I show you very simply, um, let me see here. I'm going to move to a different page really, really fast. And I'm going to show you this because I want to make sure you guys get the basics of this before we get into drawing something a little more complicated. So if I have my horizon line, I'm going to show you really quickly. This is the case for two-point perspective. If I have both my vanishing points, if I put them super, super close together, and then I start drawing a cube, like let's say right here, I start drawing a cube out in those perspective points. This is again getting into like a two-point perspective, so if you're not familiar, check out that first episode. Uh, I'm going to draw it out really, really quickly. You can see how fast this cube, like do you see how pointy this corner is? 
how like long this, this is almost like a straight 90 degree angle corner of this box. The perspective on this box is skewed. This is not a realistic looking perspective here. I'll even hold it up so you guys can see a bit better. This isn't like a realistic looking perspective, meaning like if you go outside in the world and you see something that looks like this, you need to contact your eye doctor immediately because it should not be looking like this in the real world. Uh, if we want things to look realistic, our vanishing points would be very, very far away from each other. Like if you're walking down like a normal street outside, the so-called vanishing points, if you were trying to find them, would be very, very far away. So if I, again, if I put two more vanishing points out here and a very, very rough horizon line, and then I try to draw a square based off of those, you can see a little bit that this square is going to look, this is very, very fast. Sorry, it's a cube, not a square, but you understand what I mean, hopefully. Um, that this is going to start looking a bit more realistic and less skewed, less like the perspective is like bending in on itself, almost like a fisheye. So that's kind of what I mean by if your perspective is getting skewed, you need to push your vanishing points farther away from each other. But that's really getting into more of a two point perspective. Um, since we're going to do one point perspective for this, we don't have to worry about it as much. And I'm going to start throwing down some things really fast into here because I do want to be able to show you guys how to rough in people and like cars and more fun things than just like boxy buildings. But essentially that's what we're going to do is that we always want to start out if you're unfamiliar with perspective, you really the best and safest place to start out is just with cubes and squares and then making things more complicated and building out shapes from then. So I got the side of my building right here, which is facing towards us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top edge of this and I'm going to drag it down towards our perspective point, which is going to be very, very close. It's going to be so close to this perspective point that this is almost going to start to look a little bit skewed, but we got this. So Keep in mind, as things are getting farther away from you, as they're getting further towards this perspective point, they're gonna get smaller. So I have this front facing side of our building right now, but I'm gonna try to determine where the other side of this building is, because we're seeing just the tiniest sliver of the other side of this building. And something that's really helpful is if you actually just have a, a cube of any sort, and if you start moving it around and seeing what it looks like, if you move it around in space, that's gonna help you a lot with your perspective drawing but I'm gonna try and figure out where I want the side of this cube to be. And again, I'm gonna make this line perpendicular to my horizon line because it's the other side of our building. So maybe I'll even use my triangle here. And I'm gonna try to estimate where I think this should be. And it's just gonna be a tiny little sliver essentially of this building. You see how, like if this is the side of the building and it's just a big cube right now, you see how like tiny that sliver is because it's vanishing in space. And even that might be a bit too large because it's so close to our perspective point. But I think this is a good start for like, this is our first really boxy looking building. And what I wanna do, if I start, actually I'm gonna throw in a road and a sidewalk on this side of it. So maybe your road's right here. And I'm gonna do this fairly quickly. Um, so I have things going towards my vanishing point and maybe I'll start where I have this sidewalk continuing on the other side so I'll draw a line over here for the sidewalk continuing and I'll make sure I get my road you know roads obviously larger than a sidewalk so I want to see roughly how large is that road going to be compared to the sidewalk and I'm going to start the corner of the sidewalk on the other side maybe right there again torn going towards our vanishing point I know this looks like a crazy angle right now but you'll see in a second that it'll look right once I put it down so I'm gonna do, this is our road. Our road's getting tiny, tiny, tiny as it goes back into space. And then I'm gonna build in a little bit more of my sidewalk right here, which is gonna be about the same width of this one. So maybe I'll even take a rough estimate of that width and then use my ruler to guide it down to this point. So that's the rough edge of my sidewalk right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start throwing in some buildings right here because I think it'll be a little easier on this side to see how you can get buildings to look a bit more accurate since this is so close to the vanishing point. So I'm going to take my triangle really quick. And I know we're going through things very fast. That's really because I want to get past a lot of the stuff that we covered in the first class so I can show you guys how to draw some like more fun stuff. 
and really build a cohesive environment. And since we only have an hour here, I do have to talk a little fast, but I will be going back through the comments after the show has ended to answer any questions you guys have. So don't worry if your question doesn't get answered or things move a little bit too fast, I'll be able to cover it. So I'm gonna make this building, maybe I'll make it a bit taller than the one on this side, because I'm really just getting the corner of my building on the other side of the street right now. I'm gonna see if I could get it, excuse me again. <coughs> I need to drink more water today. That's what I need to do. But I'm gonna keep talking through. So this is the top of our building. I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the set where I'm gonna take that top corner and I'm gonna pull it down towards our vanishing point. And again, this is gonna look very funky at first, but it's gonna be super helpful in just a second. Because I wanna make it look like there's a lot of buildings on the street. You know, I don't just want this building and then a building on the other side of the street and that's it. We wanna make it look like a busy, filled up environment. So this line is gonna be super helpful to me because I wanna make it look like I have several consecutive buildings that are slowly getting smaller as they get farther away from us. So what I'm gonna do is, well first, I'm gonna get the top edge of this building, which I want to be perpendicular again to the horizon line. So, and I should get the bottom edge too so that we can see what our sidewalk looks like a bit better. So our sidewalk's going this way, here's the first edge of this building. And then let's say I want all of these buildings to be about the same width. This is where measuring and proportions come in and where this is a tip that'll really help you out if you're confused about finding the centerpiece. So um, I got this building here. I'm gonna figure out how wide, just like over here, I'm gonna figure out how wide I want this building to be. Maybe I even want it to be the exact same width of this building. If that's the case, then all I need to do is find the perpendicular line to horizon line that goes through this edge so that it's the same width across. And then I'm gonna line my ruler up and I'm gonna draw that line over. And then once that line's over, all I need to do is find where it intersects with this vanishing point, the same point. And I'm gonna draw a parallel line going up through that point. And that'll be the edge of this building. You can see just how much wider this building is gonna look. I'm gonna darken this line up a bit. This building looks so much wider than this one over here, but per our perspective, they're actually in proportion with one another. So believe it or not, since this one is so close to the vanishing point, it looks like it's so much smaller. It looks like it's almost skewed, but it's actually the same width as this one. Not literally on paper, but visually, if we were actually in the scene, they would be the same width as each other. So that's how I can get this building to be the same width as this one. But if I wanted more buildings the same exact width vanishing back in space, what I do is I'm going to take the top of this line right here. And first of all, this is how you can also find a center point on the line. I'm gonna find the top of this line right here and connect it down to this point. And I'm gonna draw a cross mark going through it. You can see if I drew another one between these two, whoop, then this is gonna be actually the center point of this building. So I can take that point and then I can find the halfway mark in this building if I'm doing like complicated architecture and I want things to be even. But this is the same way that we can continue to find equal width as we go down because essentially I split this building evenly in half. I can do the same thing as I go down and I can find the same width as I go down. And I know I'm going through this very quickly, but again, I promise I will go back through the chat and hopefully explain things better to you guys if we're moving a little fast. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top of this halfway point and I am going to, let me think a second. I think I'm having a little bit of a brain fart right here. So give me just a moment cause I've been moving so quickly. What I'm going to do is, well, first I'm gonna remember that this building is getting smaller as it goes back in space. So even though it looks super wide here, we should still be able to see both sides of the building on this side of it. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take Hmm. I need to look at my sketch. I'm so sorry. I'm like not having the clearest mind right now about how to do this. Um, okay. Okay. I think I got this. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. There really is so much to do with perspective drawing that I can forget sometimes how to do things, but that's okay. We can always look up tutorials and stuff, but your tutorial is me, so I'll get my act together. <laughs> so, I found the halfway point of this line right here. What I'm going to do, I just remembered, is that since I now have this halfway point, I'm gonna make a line that goes through it towards the vanishing point. 
So I have the halfway point of this building right here. I basically put a cross mark intersecting the middle of this building. So that's the center point of the building. I have this line that's intersecting through it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point up here and draw it through the center point of this line right there. And you'll this will make a little bit more sense once I do it. So I'm gonna draw it straight through that line down to the bottom here. And like I said, this is gonna look a lot smaller than this, even though they will be in proportion to each other. And once I got that point, that's when I can make my perpendicular line going up. And let's say these buildings are like, their sides are basically connected. We have no space between these buildings, which would be something else that we could build in. But this right here is what this building is. As it gets farther away in space, this is what it would look like. So that whole width of the side is getting scrunched up and getting smaller as it goes. And I can do the same thing. If I want another building of that same proportion, I'm going to take that same center line, take the edge of it, draw down through this corner. And then that point right there is going to be where I pull my perpendicular line so that I have another building of the same weight width getting smaller in space as it goes back. Let me know if you need a more in-depth explanation of that. I know I went through it very fast there, but essentially that is how you do it. That's how you measure out equal widths getting farther back in space. And that same technique is super useful for things like lampposts. Like if I were to start building up lampposts in this, I'm gonna do them very quick and rough. Again, this is gonna be a very quick rough sketch, but it's just to give you an example of how to do things so you can create your own much prettier drawing. So if I do like a lamppost, I'm gonna build it up and something else to keep in mind is that, again, this horizon line is our eye level and things like buildings and lampposts are going to be much taller than us. So you want to make sure that the top of this lamppost goes like well above your eye level. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's say I'm just going to have, you know, I'm going to draw another line right here. This isn't going to be a very detailed lamppost. <laughs> but just so you guys can see it a bit better, maybe my lamppost is just like this pole going out. Maybe there's a little bit of a light right there. So this is our lamppost. Again, if I'm going to make them going receding in space, getting smaller towards that point, I'm going to do essentially the same thing where I'm going to find wherever the center line of this lamppost might be. And this is a very thin lamppost, but again, I can do the similar thing that I did to this building where if I zoom in on this lamppost, let's say this is a tiny cross section of the lamppost, I can essentially find each corner the topmost and the bottommost corners and draw like a cross mark through it and then find that center point and then wherever that is I would then mark out this center line that's the same one going through these buildings so since this is so scrunched up I'm just kind of kind of eye it and that's a skill like the more perspective drawing you do the better you'll get at just eyeing things and it'll help your actual just drawing from life and like drawing without a grid and anything like that, your general pers view of perspective and your ability to replicate it will get better as you do it. So I'm gonna eye it out, and I believe the center point of this line is gonna be right about there. So I'm gonna mark out that point going to my horizon line. And again, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Where I'm gonna take the topmost corner of this, and I could bring it down like right here and have a like a pole right next to it that's the same width, but that's a little bit silly because these light posts wouldn't be lined up like a fence, like right next to each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out how far apart I want the, my second light post to be. So let's say I wanna put it like right about here. Like they're fairly close for light posts, but for the sake of our example right here, let's say it's gonna go right there. I'm gonna do essentially the same thing where I'm gonna take this top corner, I'm gonna draw it down to that line and then I'm gonna, we're not using that center line just yet, we're just figuring out where the next one is gonna be. And then I'm gonna draw another perpendicular line up to figure out. And again, if you wanna take the corner, the bottom edge of this lamppost and draw it towards the horizon line, and again with the top edge, you'll be able to figure out, you'll be able to figure out just how tall you want this to be. So I drew it a little bit longer than it needs to be. So I'm gonna erase that real quick. Again, this drawing is becoming very messy very quickly. So hopefully you guys can see what I am doing. And also if you have any suggestions for what you wanna see included or an example of something you wanna be drawn in an environment, let me know now. Um, so I have this other lamppost receding in space. 
And then I'm going to essentially do the same thing where I want finally to use the center line to figure out where I want this next lamp post to be. So I'm going to take, I essentially, like, imagine if the space between these two lamp posts was the same as our buildings. That's essentially what I'm going to be measuring out. So I have this center line going through them right here. And then I'm going to take the top edge of this lamp post. And I'm going to find where the center line intersects with the edge of that lamp post. Well, really, I should do the inner edge since we're really finding out the space between them. And then I'm going to draw a line through there. And whatever that point lines up with, the base plane of your lamp post that we had just drawn out, that is where your next lamp post is going to be. So I'm going to draw that up and I'm going to make sure top of my lamp post is right there and then I'm going to draw my little light coming out. Because I have this one vanishing point going down this way and my other base plane vanishing point coming up towards the vanishing point that way. So that is how I would kind of get lamp posts and things like buildings um, vanishing in equal proportion to each other as they get farther away. This is a very rough and dirty drawing. So I think if that's clear to everyone, we can start putting a little more detail into the space. Because I did want to cover, since we're not using a reference image, I wanted to cover how you can start making things look believable and realistic as if you had used a reference image or if, like this is just a realistic space. Um, and I found that one way to do that, especially when replicating architecture, is to include a lot more lines than you think there should be, which sounds really funny. But essentially, if you look at a building, there's going to be a lot more going on than what meets the eye. It's obviously not going to be just a straight cube. And I actually have a better example in this, if I can pull it out really fast and show you guys the... Actually, this was the drawing that I used for the thumbnail on this class. And it's kind of a funky drawing where I was just kind of playing around with things. But you can see right here, um, I was starting to go in and add details to these buildings to make them look a bit more realistic. And I'll hold them up since I used a lighter pencil for this so you guys can see a little better. There is a person floating in space. I will explain that in just a second. I know that looks really funky right now. Um, but you can see, I started to go in and try to like depict out windows and things like that. And I spaced these windows out using the same exact technique that I just showed you for the lamp post as well as the buildings to get like equal width windows. And then what I did is I went back in and I tried to get every single little ledge, every single little detail I can imagine. So on this wind, I made sure to include the edge of this window right here going in space as well as the edge of the divider in the window and just Getting a lot of those little edges and lines will help the believability of your illustration as you draw it. Yes. We have some questions in YouTube about rounded objects and yes. archways and yes. things like that. Domes, half domes. Yeah. Okay. So I covered that a little bit in my previous class, but I can go in a little more depth right now. So I'm going to go back to my other drawing and let's just add an archway in here somewhere. Um, I talked about drawing a cylinder in my previous class, so I'm not going to go about go over that just for the sake of time tonight. Uh, but we're, I am going to show you guys how you can draw an archway. So this is not going to look like a believable scene at the end of this class. I apologize for that. I wish it could be. Um, but sometimes I just kind of need to sketch things out to explain them to you guys rather than focusing on making everything look perfect. It's just kind of a trade-off to be able to try and teach you guys better what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lovely building right here and I'm going to turn this into an archway instead. So I'm going to grab a different pencil because I've really worn this one down a bit. Actually, I'm going to get one that's slightly darker. I got a 5B pencil right here. And I'm going to turn this into the archway. So the first thing I have to do to make this into an archway is to figure out where my supporting beams are going to be. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. I can even figure out if I want them to be exactly even to each other. I can do the same thing I did before where I'm going to find the center point of this building. And that is my center line right there. And then from that point, I'm going to try and get an equal equidistant from that and figure out where I want my supporting beams to be. So maybe I want it there and then the other one equidistant on this side. So they're going to be about the same size since we're looking at them dead on and they're not vanishing towards this point at all. And then I'm just going to draw a line up so I can get 
perpendicular with the horizon line so I can get kind of like the beginnings of the posts that are going to be supporting our arch. So I have those out. Um, I'm going to, so I have this side of the building right here, but I'm going to make that smaller because our little archway supporting post would not be that long going towards the vanishing point. So I'm going to make it a little more believable and add another line going up here so we can kind of get the edge of our first post going this way. And then if I want to continue that same width on this side, I can do the same thing I did before to figure out this building, which is taking that point right here and making, again, parallel to the horizon line. I'm not worried, I'm sketching out really fast, so I'm not worried about it getting exactly parallel, but if you want this to be perfect, that's really what you gotta do is keep it parallel to the horizon line. I'm gonna draw from that edge out here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my vanishing point, connect it to this edge so I can get that vanishing in space. And then this is where the second post would end. So I'm gonna draw this out a bit darker so you guys can see that a bit better. Get it in really quickly. So I got this post right here and then my other post standing right here. Hopefully you guys can see that fairly clearly, but that's how I know that they are equal widths and one's not gonna look a lot thinner than the other in perspective. So I got those two posts going up and then we're gonna try to draw an archway in between them. So getting circles and spheres, like I explained before, there's a little bit of a trick to it where you really wanna start out with like a square or a rectangle. Whenever you're making more complicated shapes, it's the easiest way you can do it is to start out with a square rectangle because they're very easy to draw. So I'm gonna get a line going right here. This is gonna be like the bottom of my archway where the curve's gonna begin. So I'm gonna put it close to the top. I'm gonna make this line parallel with the horizon line and I'm gonna draw it connecting these two right here. And I'm gonna use this top part as like my rectangle to figure out how I'm gonna draw this archway. So center of these two posts, I already know is this line going straight through the center. So I know that the archway is gonna meet up at the top of this. And the easiest way to kind of get this circle going, let me think of how I wanna explain this, is, well, I don't want it to, first off, I don't wanna do what I was just about to do, which is connect this like that, because this needs like thickness at the top. There would be no thickness if I put my archway right up at the top there. So I'm gonna make sure that I make this rectangle that I'm gonna be drawing my archway in a little bit further down. So let's say I want the top of my archway to be about that thick. I'm gonna draw this line going through it so that this rectangle is gonna be the one that I'm creating my archway out of, where I'm essentially just gonna be cutting the corners off of this. If you have, there's lots of different tools for perspective drawing. Um, Sometimes if I'm getting a circle, I like to just use like a tin can or something round, but you have to remember when you're doing archways that essentially what it is is half a circle. We're drawing half a circle out of here and I'm gonna make sure that each edge of this circle is gonna go through like four points. So I have a point right here, a point in the center right here, and then another point right here where my archway is beginning. And then from that, all I have to do is kind of connect the two and what I'm doing right here is that I, um, a tip for throwing out really long straight lines without a ruler is that you wanna make sure you're drawing from your shoulder instead of like your elbow or your wrists. Uh, and that is the case because when you're drawing from your elbow and your wrists, they're kind of hinged at a point here. So they're gonna wanna make curves. So when you're drawing and if you don't wanna develop carpal tunnel, you don't wanna do a whole lot of this. You wanna make sure you're drawing from your shoulder. But to be able to get that curve easily and accurately, I, that's exactly what I did is that I used my wrist and kind of let my wrist do what it naturally wants to do in order to get that curve accurate. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And another tip for drawing perspective is that feel free to move around your paper. Actually, if your paper's been as stagnant as mine has been, you're probably giving yourself a harder time than you need to. Um, so I'm going to make sure that that is going this way. So I have a bit easier time drawing out this archway. And then I have the beginnings of this arch. So I have the first front facing part of this archway, but I wanna make sure that I also get this back face of it so that we can see this side of the archway as it vanishes in space. And to do that, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where this point lines up on this side of this post. So I'm taking that point and I'm gonna draw it towards our vanishing point in order to find that. 
And this vanishing point is pretty close, so this is going to look kind of scrunched. Uh, and this right here is going to be the point where our archway begins on the other side. But I have to do the same thing for this post over here, which is a little more complicated since we can't see the opposite side of this post. We can only see this side right here. And all we have to do is essentially treat this post as if it was transparent. So I already have this one base plane right here where we can kind of see the back of this post. But I'm going to take this front corner here and I'm going to draw it towards the vanishing po point. I don't even need to draw out the whole line. I can just get this one point right here. And then from that point, I'm going to draw a perpendicular line going straight up so that I can get the invisible side of this post. So if I draw that going straight up and I need to do it towards completely towards the top, then this is the side we can't see of this post. Essentially, it looks like it's transparent now. And I didn't quite get the top of this. I can show you really quickly. Uh, I'm going to get the topmost point so you can see the upper plane of this transparent box. So I drew this line out here, which is that back plane. And then the top of this, I'm going to take this point right here, which is like the uppermost point of this rectangle and I'm going to draw it down towards my vanishing point up until it lines up with that back plane right there and then right here if I draw this out a bit darker is the topmost plane of this transparent kind of rectangular shape that we have going on. So we need to know that in order to get the um, archway that's going in the back of this. So essentially what it's going to look like is that we're going to have our front facing arch right there and then a little bit behind it, we're going to have our second arch going back. And then we're going to be able to see a lot of this face. And then we're not going to be able to see that. Like our archway is going to end up looking wider on this side. And we'll be able to see more of this side than we can of this side here. It's going to be cut off since this is shifted towards our right side rather than right in front of us. Um, so I'm going to get this archway doing a very similar thing that I did to the front. Which is I'm going to find, I have this point right here. I'm going to find the same point on the other side of this. So I'm taking this point at the corner of my archway and I'm drawing it down towards the vanishing point. And then I'm taking this corner right here, which we can't see this side again, but that's where the archway would meet on the opposite side of these posts. And I'm then going to find the center point between these two lines that are coming down from these points that we want to connect so that I can do a similar thing that I did before. So. To find that center point, I'm going to take the bottom edge and this top point here, and I'm going to draw a cross mark between them. Essentially, if you want to find the center line of anything, you're going to draw a cross mark between each corner of your box in order to find it. So I know this is getting really busy right now, but that's all I'm doing is just making that cross mark between them. And then drawing up a perpendicular line in the middle of this crossway so that this right here is going to be my center point between those two points and I need to make that go up towards the top of this so I can get the archway complete. So I have that and then the last thing I need to figure out before I can actually draw this arch accurately is where this point meets on the other side. So the top of this, since I don't have that drawn back in space quite yet, again taking that point there, drawing it towards my vanishing point. You can see now why I chose one point perspective for this because it really it's very complicated very fast, but once you get it in your head, it can be a lot simpler than it seems. So I have that point vanishing in space, and then I have this line up here, the sides of this. So I'm trying to find where this is on the opposite side. I'm going to take this transparent edge that we drew right here, where we could see the top of this, and I'm going to follow that line, because that is essentially the back-facing plane of this object where we can see like the topmost, my words are getting a little bogged down. So we can essentially see the topmost plane of this whole box right here starts with this corner. And I'm going to continue it across so that we can see it a bit better. And I might even crank out those non-photo blue pencils so I can draw things so that you guys can see it a bit better. Um, using multiple colors when you do this is extremely helpful and I'm sure you can see why because <laughs> everything looks very gray right now. But essentially all I'm doing is getting the topmost plane of this out, and then taking this top corner, connecting it down to my vanishing point, and connecting it to this plane so that I can get the topmost plane, 
and then this point right here is vanishing back and it's going to hit this center point right there. That's going to be essentially this width right here, back here, is going to be that right there. I know it's kind of difficult to see right now, but I'm just going to get another perpendicular line going across. And now I should be able to draw that second archway. You can see how like this becomes a lot of work very quickly. Um, but the more you do this kind of very manual, almost mathematical work, the easier you'll be able to just see this kind of thing and not be able to draw out all these different complicated grid lines. Um, so again, these two points right here and this point right here is gonna be what creates my archway. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before is I'm gonna use my wrist to try and get that curve as accurate as possible. I'm gonna do it on the other side as, too, as well. Again, turn your paper around if that's hard for you. And again, connecting these two points here, I'm gonna shade this a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better what, what we got. But we're seeing the topmost part of this arch and then the side of it start to come through. And then this is the side of the post that's coming down. So I'm doing really quick shading here. But this is how you can begin to get like an archway going through. And even this, if you like, that was a lot of work and you can see perspective drawing is quite a bit of work when you're first beginning and when you're first trying to get your brain to work within this very mathematical and almost geometric space. Um, but at the end of the day, we created what is essentially a very simple shape in a very complicated way. But what perspective drawing is here to do is not necessarily, unless you're like an architect or a cartographer or someone like that, um, you're hopefully won't be doing this every single time. You're kind of using these as guidelines for your sketches in the future in order to see things a bit better, but you wouldn't necessarily draw out your grid every single time you do this. It's just a method in order to see a bit better how things are working in space. So I know now like I'm below, like my eye level's right here. I'm looking up at this object and it's towards my right. So I'm gonna see more of this side plane. And that's essentially what all of this should teach you as you look at it. So there's our archway right there. <laughs> it was a very complicated archway. Um, I wanted to talk really quickly about how you draw people in perspective. I'm worried that will be a bit too complicated for what we started with right now. If you wanna see a show on that, please let me know. I'll be able to get one in because it is a whole nother mess of getting like facial proportions and everything in perspective is a whole thing. Um, so I think right now I'm just gonna try to focus on adding a bit more details to this piece so we can get a little bit more of the believability in and I can show you guys how you can draw like little, or not archways, but um, ridges and things like that and windows on some of these buildings so you can see them a bit better. And I'm actually gonna pick up an even darker pencil. And if, again, if you have anything other like specific thing that you wanna see drawn like this archway, let me know now. I might be able to get one more thing in before we have to wrap this class up. Unfortunately, perspective is just something that you can, I, I could teach a whole semester of classes on perspective. That's how complicated things get and how much stuff there is to learn. There's like drawing shadows in perspective. There's two point, three point. It goes on and on. And it's really exciting once you get into it, but it can be very daunting. And I'm hoping I'm helping a little bit rather than making things scarier. <laughs> Maybe this only made things scarier for you. Um, but I promise you like, once you get it, you get it. It's like riding a bicycle. YouTube is all very impressed with all of your perspective knowledge, and they are very excited for people in perspective. Excellent. Okay. That is great. Yeah, because I originally I was going to try to show you how you can draw a person really quickly, and even like you saw my drawing previously where I had done that, um, but I think it would be too much for this class because it has so much in intricacies. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes, thank you, Frida on its own that I don't want you to come away with a very bad understanding of how to do it because I didn't have enough time to explain it. So that's why I'm choosing to leave it out of this class right now, even though that was my original intention. Um, but yeah, I would love to show you guys how to do it or animals like, I, we can just show, I can just show you guys how to draw a person walking their dog and that would be like a whole hour long class. So all I'm doing right now is I'm trying to contribute a bit more to the believability of this piece, which is, trying to figure out and think about things I can add to a scene to make it look more realistic. So really the easiest way to do that is to come up with like a list of things that you might see on a street, like street lamp posts, maybe like a garbage can, 
a fire hydrant, a car, a person, listing those things out and creating a list will help you a lot because it's a lot to think about. We've already thought about a lot when it comes to like this archway and things like that. And I'll even go back to my original thumbnail drawing here so I can show you guys some examples um, without me getting bogged down too much in what I'm doing here in this mess. Um, but you can start to see a bit, if I come back over here, that essentially all I ended up doing was drawing a lot more parallel and perpendicular lines. Like this building right here is still practically a box. Um, I didn't add too much to it in order to start making it look more realistic as a building. So things to look out for um, and something that's really helpful is if you do a lot of urban sketching, if you're planning on drawing lots of cityscapes, if you want to draw lots of cityscapes from your imagination, urban sketching and going out downtown and actually looking at buildings and drawing them out is going to help you a lot because you'll start to build up basically a... Um, a whole tab of different examples to use from without necessarily having to look exactly at an image of a building. So something I did here is that I added basically almost like columns going up on the side of this. Buildings a lot of the time tend to be a little thicker around the corners, which sounds funny, but you can see I have kind of this ledge around the bottom edge of this building and also the top of ed edge of this building. And that's something really simple that you can already do to make this look a bit more realistic and a bit more believable as if I had drawn this from a reference image. I also added an awning right here, which I used a very similar curved technique for this, where I had decided where I wanted the corner edge of this awning to be. And I had had it out as a box, and then I essentially just connected those two edges with an archway in order to get the edge of this awning going, and then added a little bit of shading and things to make things look more realistic. Um, something else is that on this piece right here, you can kind of see that my proportions were already starting to get off because I have these really thin sidewalks and you can tell they're thin as soon as I try to start putting people in. Like they looked good at first until I, till I started trying to put a person in and then I realized just how thin this would be. Um, and a quick tip right here, like these are obviously more complicated. If you wanna start putting people in your drawings and you just wanna draw out like almost like stick figure like people, like you're not too concerned with what they're gonna look like, you just wanna suggest at them or they're really small in the background and you don't need a lot of details. Um, the most important thing you need to know is that, again, the horizon is at eye level. So wherever your scene is and whatever things look like is gonna be relative to your height. So I'm like five foot three, I'm fairly short. Most people are taller than me. So when I'm drawing people in a plane, if I wanna put it from my perspective, I'm drawing most people with their heads above my horizon line. So my horizon line's right here, it's hard to see in this image, but I would draw them with like their heads above the horizon line because I'm looking up at people most of the time. On the other side of this, if you're fairly tall and you look down on people, or if you're depicting a character in a character story where they're looking down on people, um, you would want to draw people's heads below the horizon line. And that is true no matter how far back they get in space, no matter how close they are to your vanishing points, this person's head should always be below the horizon line if they are shorter than you and above the horizon line if they are taller than you. It stays consistent throughout. Uh, that's the same is true from like the buildings that we were drawing receding into space earlier is that no matter how far back these buildings got into space, they never descended below the horizon line because that horizon line again is at our eye level and those buildings will always be taller than our eye level unless you have a really tiny building. So that's important to know whenever you're drawing anything in space is to think about how it is in its proportions relative to you as a person or whoever your character or your viewer is. Even though it seems a little strange to make this almost, um, this two-dimensional drawing almost three-dimensional in the aspect that we're thinking about what the person viewing it is seeing, that's really how you're going to make your drawing more believable and more accurate as you're depicting it. And that's really one of the most important things to know about perspective is that you have to take the viewer into account when you're drawing all of these different environmental factors. Um, for instance, I drew this, peop this person up here floating in space, and part of that is because I wanted to get into um, what these shapes start to look at as you're looking up at a person, and simplifying a person's body into shapes like this is how you can easily put it into perspective. If you see those little wooden mannequins, I know we have some in like our Soho drawing kits, little wooden mannequins, that's really what those are helpful for. Um, I know not a lot of people use those, but they are great for looking at the proportions of a person. And if you take that person, if you're trying to draw a person where you're looking up at them from below, they're like floating in space for some reason. They have superpowers, it's the rapture, I don't know. 
they're floating in space for some reason, taking one of those little wooden mannequins and really just holding it above your head and seeing what things look like is super helpful. Um, and I'll even say here is that as shapes get moved up and down or away from like your eye level plane, they tend to start looking really scrunched and that gets into a bit into foreshortening, which is something that I can cover a bit more accurately in our drawing, like drawing people class if you guys really want that. Um, but I do want to touch on foreshortening it really quickly because if you go and you look at other tutorials on perspective, I do think it's something that's very helpful to know. But foreshortening is essentially, if we even go to our front facing camera here, I can show it a bit better. It's when you're looking at something directly on. So obviously my arm right here is fairly long. I have a very long arm, but if I point my arm directly towards the camera, all of a sudden you can't really see like the rest of my arm right here. All it is essentially is a little circle that's going wrapping around my fist. That is what foreshortening is. It's like, I wouldn't want to draw out the full length of my arm. Like a lot of people, if they're drawing foreshortened items, especially arms and things like that, and they're drawing them in perspective, a lot of time I'll see them do like this almost, or like that, where it's like, you can still kind of see the length of the arm. But if I'm looking at my fist directly on, like if you're in an action comic and someone's about to get punched and you want to show that fist directly on, you're almost not going to see like any of my arm. It's almost going to look like, like my fist is almost the size of my head. That's a bit of what foreshortening is. Yes. Foreshortening was another request. Yeah. So we can get into that a bit more in the drawing people class and I'll make sure I get to it. Cause I know, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if it was for drawing entire environments, but again, you're putting, essentially you're drawing more boxes like we did previously and kind of carving out and adding to them as you see fit in order to create an environment. But the most important part of drawing entire environments is just keeping in mind proportions and how things measure to each other, which is why I wanted to show you so bad how those buildings, even though that one building was super, super wide, how it got smaller in space and how those proportions, while they're proportionate to each other and they're technically the same width it's, we, we were actually in the space, um, they look really scrunched up as they're getting closer to that perspective point because everything's getting farther away. And so showing you how you can measure that out is something that's really important and showing you how you can kind of build everything around your perspective and your eye level, I think is the most important part of drawing completed entire environments. So I hope that gave you like a little ounce of an idea of how you can do it more effectively. And yeah, I hope this class helped a lot. Do we have any last questions before I start wrapping things up? Because again, I will be going back through the chat. If you think of anything after the show has ended, I will be going through it tomorrow morning. Um, so there's still time to get your questions in if you need me to answer things. Um, but we can also wrap, like discuss more. <laughs> there's so much with perspective. I do love perspective drawing. It's so much fun. Um, I think I, one more thing I wanted to include right before I wrap up is that while I'm doing all of this without reference images, because I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to create things straight from your imagination, you obviously can use reference images when you're doing this. Like if you have a specific building you want to recreate, you can take that reference image, draw out a cube and reconstruct that building from that reference image in a different perspective. That is definitely something you can easily do. So while I was putting this through the lens of like creating something without a reference image, because that's one of the wonderful things perspective drawing can do. You can obviously use actual reference images in order to recreate environments in different perspectives from what the photo was taken as. So do keep that in mind. And yeah, thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I hope I gave you an ounce of understanding better about what this is, because I do really love this and I hope I did it at least a little bit of justice. Um, Again, if you're interested in any of these products, go on to jerryzartaroma.com and type in that class code JL317 into the search bar and you'll be able to pull everything up. And if you want that intro to perspective class, it is JL313. You'll be able to find it on our YouTube and everything. And finally, if you want, if you try out perspective drawing or if you have any like very specific questions about perspective drawing, you can join our Jerry's Live Facebook group. Just make sure you answer the security question. Otherwise we will deem you a robot and not let you in. Um, but I would love to see your work there. I saw a couple people posted some perspective drawing that they tried out after the last class and that made me very happy. So thank you for doing that. It makes me feel justified in my class teaching and everything. And again, join us for next week, which Emmy will be showing you guys how to do portrait painting with a limited palette. And I know she's very excited for that, but yeah, thank you all so much and bye.